You are watching ABC 7 News at 5.30. Welcome back. A start date has been set for a major downtown Venice construction project. Tampa, Venice, and Miami avenues will be all torn up and then redone over the next several months. The project will start on July 9th. That's when visitors and residents will begin to see construction equipment downtown. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley joins us to explain how this will impact local vendors. Christopher. Well, good evening. As the project starts, so does the shuffle to move some big downtown events, most notably the farmer's market. For nearly 20 years, the Venice Farmer's Market has been at home on Tampa Avenue. I think with the, the scope of the project for downtown, it only makes sense to be in an interim location while that's happening. The interim location is just a few blocks west at City Hall. Lee Perron is the market manager. He's excited about the move, but with a stipulation. I don't think this is a great long-term uh, location simply because we have a smaller market with smaller crowds during the summer. Tampa, Venice, and Miami avenues will be torn up and redone over the next several months, and that's forcing several downtown events to move. It's going pretty well, uh, even though us humans are not... Uh, we don't take change real well. Everyone is understanding the, the magnitude and purpose of the project. That being said, when the project is over, the city is keen on moving the farmer's market permanently. If we can make it uh, more enticing uh, and a better location for the farmer's market, we'd like to explore those, those opportunities. And two, we know that we, in the long run, the farmer's market really needs to get off of West Tampa, which is a, one of our major east-west thoroughfares. Barone isn't against the permanent move. He just doesn't want the market to stay by City Hall. He wants to go onto Nassau Street. It's a perfect fit for us. We're still downtown. We're still visible. We have the infrastructure with the parking at Centennial Park and the restrooms located close by. Plus, Perone points out that the market has grown exponentially over the last year. It went from about 3,200 a week, you know, during the February, March time frame to 5,000 per week. So you're going to need a you're going to need a location that's going to handle that many vendors and handle that kind of attendance volume. And again, the project will begin on July 9th, and it's slated to end sometime around the end of December or early January. Live in Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Christopher, thank you. Today, the city of Sarasota is starting work on a resurfacing project on a busy stretch of Osprey Avenue. Crews will work between Siesta Drive and Bay Vista Street in phases, starting from South Drive to Boyce Street. Osprey is expected to remain open during the project, but drivers could see some slowdowns. The entire project is expected to be finished by next spring. Although Alberto did not directly hit the Sun Coast, the storm may have made the ongoing erosion problem on Lido Beach worse. As Alberto was approaching over the weekend, it kicked up the surf. People who live at the first Lido condominium say waves were crashing over the walls of that condo, and the shoreline continues to erode. Sun Coast Congressman Vern Buchanan says he looked at the beach after the storm and says we should continue to invest in renourishment projects. And we just got to make sure we continue to invest and do the right thing and, and stabilize our beach, beaches because it's a big asset. Someone said the beaches produce for every dollar we spent in beach renourishment, we get $8 back. The taxpayers do in terms of economic development. City has both a short-term and a long-term renourishment project in the works for Lido Key. The short-term one is awaiting notice to proceed from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The long-term project recently received a favorable ruling from an administrative law judge. A waterfront park in Sarasota now has more than just a nice view. The city of Sarasota recently installing a title marker and educational sign at the north end of Nora Patterson Bay Island Park on Siesta Key. This marker in the water shows tidal variations and explains the factors that can influence water levels like storms, climate change and tides. The city's sustainability team added that marker and sign to the park recently. And some surfers are still enjoying some kicked up surf thanks to Alberto. One of our viewers, Meredith Blaine, sent us these photos of surfers taking advantage of the waves at the North Jetty in Venice. She says about 10 of them were out in the water around 9 o'clock this morning. Thanks, Meredith, for sending in those photos. Certainly uh, great for those surfers, but those rip currents can sometimes really catch you off guard if you're not aware yeah, of those. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Our weather right now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. We don't get the opportunity to get those big waves uh, very often, only when there's usually tropical systems around, and certainly there was, and Alberto did kick up the surf. It still is. This is the uh, shot, again, from uh, the Casey Key webcam showing 
uh, the high surf. Uh, although it's come down a little bit, the rip current advisory stays with us until 8 o'clock. More than likely, it will be uh, discontinued at that point. Uh, the tropical satellite imagery continues to show that steady stream of moisture coming up from the south, but hasn't produced a lot of rain for us today. We had a few showers around, but we are looking at a little bit more action right now, uh, starting to develop the heaviest rain by far uh, right around the center, which is now heading into Tennessee bringing some heavy rainfall there. That's the subtropical depression. Big storms to the north of us, but for us, this line of showers continues to progress to the north. Nothing heavy at this point, but uh, expect a brief downpour if you're uh, maybe out on the beaches there and also up near I-75 and 275 where they meet. Uh, the uh, showers will be scattered about through this evening. The rain chance at around 40% for this evening. They still stay rather high tomorrow, so we'll see a mixture of sun and clouds on Wednesday. A little bit more cloudiness at times. And that flood warning, one flood warning remains in effect for uh, the river there, the Mayaka River at the Mayaka State Park, but it's just barely over flood stage at this point, and we haven't seen a lot of rainfall. The winds are starting to calm down, too, and they're out of the south, basically south to southeast. Anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour up and down the coast right now. At 10 in Northport, 9 in Minnesota Beach and Venice at 9 miles an hour. The future cast does show a few showers around this evening, but not a lot. The activity winding down and then tomorrow uh, we'll see a chance for a few morning showers scattered about that rain chance, not all that high. And then we'll start to see a little bit more activity developing in the afternoon and evening. Some of that could be heavy at times. Tomorrow's forecast does call for a chance for showers and a few storms for the first day of no school for Manatee County children. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. The suspected Golden State killer back in front of a judge today. The hearing was to discuss how much information relating to the case should be released to the public. 72-year-old Joseph James D'Angelo appeared to listen attentively, much different than his previous appearance where he was in a wheelchair looking dazed and scruffy. Authorities believe he is behind 12 deaths and at least 50 rapes that happened in California from 1974 through 1986. For the first time since the deadly school shooting, students in Santa Fe, Texas are back in the classroom today. On May 18th, a student is accused of killing 10 people and injuring 13 others. Ten white wooden crosses are on display in front of the school in honor of those victims. People from all over the community and surrounding areas were at the school this morning to support the students on their first day back. We came from Kingwood, Texas, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from here. Um, we just wanted to really come and just show our support. You know, this is obviously we're students at a high school. I'm a teacher at a high school, and it just sits really close to home for us. So we just wanted to come show them that they're in our thoughts and prayers and that we're still thinking of them and just to show our support. School officials say there would be additional security and counseling service on campus today. The last day of school is set for Thursday. A follow up now to an animal hoarding situation that happened last month in Northport. A 55 year old woman was arrested and charged with animal cruelty after authorities found that she was neglecting animals inside her home. 83 animals in total were taken. 33 cats rescued are now available for adoption at Cat Depot. Most of those cats arrived fairly healthy. However, some had minor issues, which they were all treated for. Cat Depot says a number of them have already been adopted. Thankfully, since the cats have been put out for adoption, um, all of the hoarding cats, we have had eight adoptions. So eight of them have found their forever homes, um, which leaves us around, I believe, 29 currently available for adoption. Hardin says none of the cats are aggressive, although some are shy due to limited interaction with humans. The adoptable cats range in age from 19 months to eight years. Hopefully they find a forever home. Very soon, yeah. Still to come tonight on your Suncoast News. Gas prices continue to rise. How much money you'll be putting into your tank this summer. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Finish Upgrade event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to a premium finish. Schedule your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or go to californiaclosets.com. 
Get to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota for big savings during the Chrysler Pacifica Incredible Sales Event. Get KBB's 2017 Best Buy Award overall winner, the Chrysler Pacifica, for just $23,999. Or save big and get the new Chrysler 300 Touring with an MSRP over $30,000 for just $21,999. That's a savings of over $8,000. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota today. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. When my youngest, Addie, was two and a half, she was diagnosed with leukemia. When we first heard that diagnosis, you feel extremely alone. Walking in that light, the night light, with 6,000 people carrying lights, white for survivors, red for supporters, gold in memory of those who have passed. It's the Leukemia Lymphoma Society's hope that every year there are fewer gold lanterns. Your lantern will make a difference. Start a team, join a team. Help us light the night. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Finish Upgrade event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to a premium finish. Schedule your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or go to californiaclosets.com. Two children die each day in the United States from drowning, but thankfully there are ways that parents and loved ones can protect children around water. Holly Furfer has some tips on how to prevent drownings. Temperatures are climbing around the country and many families are taking to the water for a little relief. But as you cool off, it's important to take precautions to reduce the risk of drowning, whether you're at the pool, lake or the ocean. The top priority is making sure children are properly supervised by an alert adult. Most drownings occur quickly and quietly with little or no yelling or splashing. The CDC suggests people learn CPR to help out in case of an emergency. And although it may seem obvious, adults and children should know how to swim. But even if your child is a strong swimmer, it's a good idea to use the buddy system. Experts recommend that weak swimmers use life jackets as well as all boaters, adults and children. If you have a backyard pool, it's important to install fencing and locks and consider a pool alarm or cover. If you have small children, remove toys after swimming to prevent them from jumping in to retrieve them when unsupervised. Swimming is great exercise and staying safe can make for a great day of fun in the sun. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer. And if you're looking for some ways to keep your kids active over the next few months, one idea, the annual Kids Summer Beach Runs. One of the one-mile fun runs will start next week at Siesta Key Beach and in Venice. They'll be every Tuesday at Siesta Beach and then every Wednesday at Brohart Beach in Venice. Registration begins at 5.30, race time is 6.30. The runners will get a ribbon and a free ice pop. And for those who complete four runs, they'll get a free t-shirt. Now your ABC7 first with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. I used to do that run all the time, but now the seven gets in my way, so the seven on seven. I guess I want to get out there anyway uh, some other time. Uh, look at this. This is something I want to bring up. This is a water temperature map showing what the water temperatures are now across the Atlantic. And I got to tell you, compare this to last year, and these temperatures are running about seven to eight degrees 
below what they were last year. So a totally opposite. In fact, it, if you were to look at a map, and I'm trying to superimpose it over it, but uh, the exact opposite. Temperatures were into the mid 80s in some cases uh, over the central Atlantic and into the low 80s uh, just off the coast of Africa at this time last year. So uh, exact opposite. Does that mean we're going to see fewer storms? Well, that will come into play as far as the forecasts go, and they may not be as in intense storms as well. Uh, the water temperatures here in the Western Caribbean are, though, warmer, uh, the, just a little bit warmer than average there in the Western Caribbean and those are the storms that usually have an impact on our coast. So a little interesting note there. As far as the rain goes, we talked about those kayakers setting off for Cuba. Well, there's a lot of rain in the Florida Straits right now. This is after about uh, two feet of rain fell across parts of Cuba over the past uh, four or five days now. Heavy rain near Orlando and Daytona Beach. We missed it again today. Uh, we're getting some showers around. Don't get me wrong, but those showers are moving to the north. Pretty good clip too, 10 to 15 miles an hour, uh, bringing a brief downpour or two across places along the Sun Coast. I know Siesta Key just had a little bit of rainfall. It's uh, now for the most part ended there. Some showers along State Road 72. Pretty heavy rain along I-75, especially near Ellington, stretching uh, northward to the uh, I-275 and 75 interchange there. And those continue to head off to the north. They shouldn't be around all that long. Now, one computer forecast graphic is showing some rainfall expected over the next two days here. Uh, we will get some. I don't know if these uh, numbers are right on target. I think it may be a little less than that, but maybe a little bit more in some isolated areas with some heavier rainfall expected to forecast uh, move in uh, forecast as far as this goes the dry air really saved us with uh, Alberto uh, that dry air is still kind of hanging out to the west of us right now we're still seeing this a steady stream of moisture but you'll notice it is thinning out a bit we're not seeing as uh, bright of uh, blue and green here uh, moving up in our direction but still enough that that tropical air mass will remain in place and you notice that humidity has been running high uh, summer like dew point temperatures anticipated right through the weekend high pressure is starting to nose its itself back in after the remnants of Alberto scoot out of here. We'll see this high pressure ridge bring us more of a southeasterly wind, which will bring us those afternoon and evening storms. A good chance of that happening on Thursday and Friday uh, coming back into the weather picture. Well, temperature forecast to start things off tomorrow morning. It will be a little bit above average, mid 70s up and down the coast here. And then as highs go tomorrow, uh, maybe due to the increased cloud cover, we'll see temperatures into the uh, low to mid 80s. And again, low temperatures to start things off on Thursday will drop down only into the mid 70s. So it will be another uh, warm start to the day on uh, Thursday. Well, current conditions 79 degrees. We have a few clouds around and the humidity high 84 uh, percent. Winds out of the south at 11 and the pressure 2995. The high today uh, managed to get to 83 only. That's below average because of the increased cloud cover this morning's low was warm at 75. Our typical low at 70 and no rainfall at Sarasota Bradenton Airport for the month now well above average and for the year we're a third above average. Now the overall tropical satellite continues to show Heavy rainfall in northwest Alabama tonight and then stretching off into Tennessee where there are flood watches in effect. And for us, uh, things are still going to be on the wet side across parts of Florida uh, for the next at least 24 hours. Uh, look at the current temperature in Detroit now, 90 in Detroit. It's uh, 90 degrees in Kansas City as well, 95 in Dallas and 80 in the nation's capital, a little bit cooler there, but a 99 in Phoenix. And as far as boating goes, uh, things look a little bit better tomorrow, although seas will still be at two to three feet with a moderate chop on the bays and in the waters. Here's the seven day forecast as it shapes up for us. A mixture of sun and clouds, more clouds and sun tomorrow. We'll see 84 for a high, a little bit below average. A good chance for scattered showers and storms, mainly afternoon and evening, although there will be a few morning showers around too. We return to those afternoon and evening variety of storms on Thursday and Friday. And then the weekend gets here. We'll look for a southwest wind, which will favor inland storms late in the day. We could see a few morning showers around both on Saturday and Sunday mornings, but they shouldn't be all that much. The rain chances very light at 30% on Saturday and 20% on Sunday. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. The interstate is looking all clear in both the north and southbound lanes tonight. We are seeing only minor backups heading around the intersection of Fruitville Road and I-75, as well as the intersection of Bee Ridge and I-75. Scott? Thanks, Jacqueline. It's hard to ignore if you're traveling just about anywhere now. Gas prices just keep going up. ABC 7's Alan Cohn explains how much money you'll be putting into your tank this summer. Alan? Scott AAA says the average family is expected to pay a total of $200 more for gas this summer than last year and $250 more than 2016. So what gives? We spoke with an economist at USF who tells us there are a number of policies affecting gas prices, including throwing out the Iran nuclear deal, the trade war with China, and inflation. Professor Michael Snipe says it's what's causing the uncertainty 
in the economy, but the ABC7 watchdog, consumer watchdog Jerry Zivik says he is not convinced. But what about the U.S. manufacturers? We have the ability now to fill that in. So why don't we just fill that in and keep gas, keep gas uh, at a lower rate of, of $2 a gallon? Coming up at 7 o'clock, we'll hear more from Jerry Zivik, AAA, and an economics professor about gas prices and when we might start seeing them drop. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Alan. Social Security may seem like a relatively easy program to navigate, but the wrong moves could cost you thousands in potential benefits. Here are three missteps to avoid. If you're past full retirement age and are earning more now than you were at the beginning of your career, holding off on claiming your retirement benefit could help boost your income. If your spouse is entitled to a benefit on your work record, think twice before you delay retirement beyond their full retirement age. And be sure to check your earnings record because your benefit will be based on the earnings data on your Social Security statement. It's extremely important to make sure that information is accurate. Some license plates in California are about to go digital. Sacramento, the first U.S. city to roll out a pilot program testing this new tag technology. The digital plates use wireless technology and allow messages to be changed remotely. The plates could report if the car has been stolen or display vital Amber Alert information. If the DMV allows it, the tag could also show personal messages when the vehicle is not in motion. The tag tech won't be cheap, though. Plates are expected to sell for about $700 plus a $7 monthly fee. Ooh, $700. I wondered when that was going to come out. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. We'll stay with us. Entertainment news is coming up next. During the past 10 years, Tidewell Hospice volunteers have provided more than 1 million hours of service. They sit with patients, giving caregivers a break. They work in offices. They take their furry friends on pet therapy visits. They even clown around. Every task performed by a volunteer makes a difference in the lives of our patients and their families. Join Tidewell's volunteer team. They're truly one in a million. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru vehicles hold their value better than any other brand for 2018, according to ALG. And Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand for four years running. The Subaru Impreza is an IIHS top safety pick for 11 years running. Lease a new Subaru Impreza today for just $155 a month. Or get 0% financing with zero down. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. The ABC7 First Alert weather app just got even better. It's easy to use once you download it. First, tell the app to follow you, so you get alerts pinpointed to exactly where you are. Then customize your settings with all the places you go, from the beach to grandmother's house. Get accurate alerts for everyone you care about. You can even pick which weather alerts and categories you want and what they sound like. More ways to customize and more ways to keep your family safe. Download the ABC7 First Alert weather app today. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Imagine a world filled with pillow fights, playgrounds, and the search for the perfect climbing tree. Every kid deserves that world. But one in five kids in America struggle with hunger. At No Kid Hungry, we're committed to creating a world where every kid eats healthy food every day. We raise funds, we help families, and we lift up communities. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a part-time news specialist for live news broadcasts, a public affairs show, and paid programs. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. 
In entertainment news, a below expectations debut for young Han Solo. An estimated $103 million holiday weekend take for Solo, a Star Wars story, which is well below the $130 to $150 million predicted last week. And it's by far the lowest debut of recent Star Wars films. The reasons? Possibly lukewarm reviews, rumors of a troubled production, and a very crowded marketplace in theaters. In 1983, Tammy Ashcraft survived a harrowing 41 days at sea, navigating a hurricane-wrecked sailboat to Hawaii. Now her story is being retold on the big screen. Shailene Woodley and Sam Claflin play a couple who became lost at sea in a drift. Ashcraft says the movie hits close to what actually happened. Oh, I've, that's very close to what happened, um, ex if not exactly what happened. Um, trying to uh, get the boat moving, and um, I had a sextant. I, all my electronics were fried, so I had to rely on the sun and the stars to find out where I was. Ashcraft says that she still sails to this day. A drift opens in theaters this Friday. Going out to lunch with Warren Buffett could cost millions. Bidding is now open for the 19th annual Power Lunch with Warren Buffett. Two years ago, the winning bid was just shy of $3.5 million. Money raised from the charity auction goes to Glide, which is a San Francisco charity that works to end homelessness across the country. So far, the event has raised more than $26 million. The bachelorette Becca is in the driver's seat this season as dozens of suitors try to win her heart. Last night, we watched as Becca finally got her chance at finding her Mr. Right, beating 28 men one by one for the first time. The men doing anything it takes to make a lasting first impression. There was an ox, a van, a chicken, even a hearse. But one suitor happened to be someone from Becca's past who she sent packing before the rose ceremony even began. Only 21 bachelors remain, and we know one of them is Becca's secret fiance. You can find out who continues the next journey on Monday, at, next Monday actually, at 8 o'clock right here on ABC7. And for Harry Potter fans, Neville Longbottom is off the market. Actor Matthew Lewis, who played Neville in the Harry Potter movies, is all grown up now. And now he's a married man. Lewis tweeting a wedding photo of himself and new bride Angela Jones with a less than romantic caption. That explained how he missed seeing his favorite English rock band, the Arctic Monkeys, because his wife made him get married instead. <laughs> you win some, you lose some, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. We'll stay with us. We'll be right back with more news and weather.